Hi everyone, and welcome to Jane Talks Real. It's Trek Tuesday, where I'll be talking about and reviewing an episode of the original series, The Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, or Enterprise. Today, I'm looking at the Omega Glory from the original series' first season. Or as I like to call it, that time Star Trek had me totally confused. This episode was requested by Seamstrix, with a warning that it's awful, so this should be a laugh. Let's go! We begin the episode with Enterprise approaching the planet Omega-4, where they detect another vessel and go to Red Alert. But calm down, it's just the Exeter, who don't respond to hails? Wait, why has this episode suddenly become desaturated? Anyway, an away team of three main characters and some poor red shirt beam to the Exeter's engine room and discover empty uniforms, and into the credits we go. The ship is deserted, but all the shuttles are still in the shuttle bay, and, uh, red shirt, why are you doing that? Don't you want to sit down or move the chairs or something? No? McCoy scans the crystals and announces that that's what's left of the crew, even though 96% of the body being water is some bullshit and Spock listens to the last log entry, which says they're screwed for coming aboard, and now their only hope is to go down to the planet. They beam down, only to interrupt a beheading, and Captain Tracy pops up, surviving the crystallization fate of his crew by staying on the surface. And he tells them about the people who live there, the Kangs, a primitive tribe, and the Combs, who are the ones who are trying to behead fools. We discover that the virus originated on the planet, which also acts as a natural immunity, so if they want to live, they need to stay put. But Kirk is more concerned with Tracy ignoring the Prime Directive and interfering with the natural evolution of both races. McCoy is cranky because he doesn't know where the virus came from or how to cure it, but... Geez, Spock, want to chill out with a dramatic entrance? They've been attacked by the Yangs, who seem to be amassing an army, and Spock reports that Tracy got a little trigger-happy when they attacked a week ago, and... What was that? McCoy defends Tracy's actions, but Spock insists he be dealt with, but he seems to have preempted that and threatens them with a phaser before vaporizing the poor red shirt. Holy shit! Tracy contacts the Enterprise and bullshits Uhura and Sulu, but then so much happens so quickly, I'm just gonna let the clip play. See how this. <laughs> Gold. Kirk tries to escape, but that's a big old nope and Tracy bores him with facts about the planet and how everyone never gets ill, and in fact, Wu here is 462 years old. Looking great there, Wu. Tracy wants to help research how all this is possible because he wants immortality, but those pesky Yangs want to kill them. But Kirk don't care. He works himself free and the two captains get into one of those lame hand-to-hand -hand fights that always look silly. Kirk is tossed in with the Yang prisoners and another silly fight ensues set to that iconic music. You know the one. Which cuts rather abruptly to McCoy doing research while the guard takes a nap. <coughs> what the hell was that? The fight goes on. Don't they have a rest? Not that I have observed, Captain. Of course, should they wish to do so, one could always rest while the other keeps you occupied. Thank you, Spock. But Spock does indeed help. Dramatic zoom. Spock sass. Pity you can't teach me that. I have tried, Captain. McCoy enjoys his food and the woman that brings it to him. Careful, dude, she's probably like 600 years old. And while Spock tries to work the bars on the window free, the Yang dude repeats the word freedom and then has a full-blown conversation with Kirk. They work together to loosen a bar, which the Yang dude puts to immediate use and gets the hell out of there. Kirk wakes up seven hours later seemingly fine, I guess? And with the help of some rando keys, the pair go to say hi to McCoy, whose research shows that the planet's natural immunization takes a little time to work, so if the Exeter crew had stayed on the planet a little bit longer, they would have been fine. But the three of them can leave whenever they want. No messages. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Tracy and Kirk try to out-crazy each other, and then take it outside, where apparently a big battle took place, but we didn't get to see any of it, and they get into a fight, chasing each other around what looks like a set piece from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and then the Yangs get involved. Okay, I'm sorry, this whole setup looks like the four of them are going to be subjected to death by Snoo Snoo. And what's with this Titty statue? Right, this is where things go totally wackadoo. This muscular drummer rocks out for a solo performance, then this dude brings out the stars and stripes, dramatic zoom, and we get a few mangled notes of the Star Spangled Banner. No seriously, what the hell is happening? The Yang dude introduces himself as Cloud William and kicks off the Pledge of Allegiance, which Kirk joins in with, which shocks this terribly dubbed wig man. 
and while Kirk tries to explain, Tracy and his crazy eyes calls him the evil one before insulting Spock's face, which bears a striking resemblance to some demon in their holy book. Holy shit! This expression is priceless! Kirk thinks that violence isn't the answer, so suggests an alternative. Fight is done when one is dead. Great! Cue the iconic music and campy fighting again. Spock Jedi mind tricks this woman to bring him his communicator as Kirk gets the upper hand but refuses to deliver the killing blow as help arrives. Get out of the way, you! And what's with Fisherman Joe back here? Kirk then reads the US Constitution like it's Shakespeare and tells the Yangs to play nice with the Combs. And can I go now? Right. For a while there, I wondered why this episode was rated so poorly, and why Seamstrix warned me about it, because outside of the strange camera work and random desaturation of things, it wasn't too bad. It felt rather doomsday machine to me. The Enterprise comes across another ship whose crew is all dead except for the captain, who obsessively pursues a goal, to the point of being crazed. Except this episode didn't involve a giant robot space slug. It was also an interesting look into the Prime Directive and the duty Kirk has to uphold it, even when another captain is violating it. And while the acting was pretty hammy, it was an interesting shift in dynamic between the two captains. But then, then things went so batshit crazy bonkers that I'm not sure what the hell I watched. It was the weirdest shit, and honestly, somewhere between the lady in the furry bikini screaming like a cat and the American flag, I got entirely lost. I would try and pick apart what I think it all meant, but honestly, I just don't give a shit. It was weird with bizarre directing choices, and it felt like whole scenes were missed out. This was the love child of the Doomsday Machine, Arena, and Voyager's Resolutions, with a dash of 2001's Planet of the Apes and a whole heap of bullshit that was weird and I didn't like. It is worth mentioning, however, just how much I noticed in the episode that inspired early Futurama. So that was fun to spot, amid the absolute nonsense that came into play in the last quarter of the episode. So there you have it. That was The Omega Glory. If there's an episode of Star Trek you'd like me to cover, pop it down in the comments below or come say hi on social media. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button, it really does mean a lot, or consider subscribing if you want to be assimilated into my channel. Alternatively, feel free to check out my other YouTube channel, Jane Plays Games Badly. Thank you so much for watching, I'll speak to you soon, and live long and prosper!